This is my first time using the Nikon ZF for a wedding. It's nice, right? Look at it. I got the moss green. And well, I was someone that reviewed the pre-production version of this camera. I did not get to keep that one. In fact, I didn't get any discounts on this camera whatsoever. I paid full price at BJ Photo in Waterloo, which I recommend you shop at, and I got it with the 40 millimeter F2 kit lens. And I'll be using that lens today, but on the other channel, I will be doing two weddings next week with the 50 millimeter F1.2, as well as the 24 to 70 F2.8, which are two of my favorite lenses for Z series. First rule of new cameras, as a main photographer, don't do an entire wedding day on a camera that you haven't used. Today I'm actually recording a full wedding day behind the scenes video for my wife, Lindsay. This video will be up soon on our new channel that is dedicated to just wedding photography only. And if you were to subscribe to that channel, there are already a few full wedding days up there uh, behind the scenes, one in California and one with Liam back here at home, as well as a, oh, a behind the scenes wedding day that's up right now over on that channel, came out this morning, same time as this video. Also, just a disclaimer, uh, I was shooting mainly the behind the scenes video and I was shooting this camera with my second hand while mainly focusing on the behind the scenes. So settings are a little bit sloppy and aperture priority mode did some weird things that I had to fix for the next time if I ever want to use that again. Weddings are a pretty high stakes environment uh, when you've been hired to capture them. You're documenting something that will be important to your couple and their families for the rest of their lifetimes. Maybe even longer, maybe it'll be passed down generation to generation, hopefully. And a lot of the moments on a wedding day happen one time and there's no redoing them. For this reason, I prefer to have a camera with two card slots and the good news is the Nikon ZF does tick that box. One of the card slots is a micro SD and that is fine by me. Even with slow V30 cards, there were no buffer issues with the micro SD and I was shooting on raw high efficiency mode as well as JPEG. So I use the JPEGs for backup when I get home from the wedding. One thing I've heard a lot of people doing, and I even recommended it during the free three hour long landscape and travel photography tutorial, is to set your EVF and your screen to black and white so that you can see light a little bit better in the way that it's interacting with your subjects. This camera actually has a dedicated mode for that, kinda. There's a black and white mode on this dial here, and while the JPEG preview and your EVF will be in black and white, the raw file when you load it into Lightroom or Capture One will in fact be in color and not black and white. I also, this is disconnected to that, I heard a lot of people that have never touched the camera complaining that this camera is too small for them. I don't find that. I think maybe it's a little bit larger than it looks in pictures. And if you don't find it large enough, Small Rig has actually designed a grip with Nikon that makes it a little bit more ergonomic. And while it does make the ergonomics absolutely better, it makes card access a little bit more difficult. But hopefully that's an only an annoying thing you deal with once per day. There is a battery opening, so you can easily change batteries, so that's no problem. One feature I'm very happy to see is in the AF area mode, you get a C1 and a C2, and you can make these boxes any size you want, and the eye autofocus only works within them. So if you want to make the box a little bit tighter, just have people coming down the aisle so it doesn't accidentally identify somebody on the edges as the subject of your interest, uh, you get two of those, and I like them a lot. I haven't set them up yet. This is my first literal third hour with this camera, and uh, we'll get there next week on the other channel. The battery life for weddings is fine. Uh, I've been happy with any of the Z series products so far. Uh, you don't get a charger in the box, or at least I didn't get a charger in the box with your camera. You get a USB-C cord, It's a bit of a bummer. So obviously this camera charges over USB-C, uh, but you don't get a plug and you don't get an actual uh, charger anymore with it. Just a bit of a bummer. Another thing that doesn't come standard is this beautiful golden shutter release button. Uh, I got this from Clever Supply Co. and I thought that it went very well with the green. I don't know, aesthetically it's nice to look at. Maybe you want to use your camera more. One weird thing, and I don't know why they did this. So you have your manual, your aperture, shutter speed, program, and auto on this side and you can set it to that, but then you can also just change dials around, but sometimes they have no effect. Uh, so that's a bit weird and I wish they would have went the Fuji method where there's just an automatic ISO, and if you dial your ISO to automatic, it puts that into automatic mode. Then if you put your shutter speed into automatic, it makes that automatic, and it just kind of builds the aperture priority or shutter priority or program auto, whatever you want, but in a much less dumb way than it does on the ZF. The EVF is very nice to look through. It's large, and it doesn't feel cramped. You also have a button up top on the viewfinder to change between either, you can set it to be automatic, but you can just change it and be like, I only want to shoot monitor and you can set it through that button, which is very, very convenient. 
Another very nice to have is that uh, when you, if you're wearing polarized sunglasses and you go into vertical mode and you're using the screen, the screen doesn't actually go to black, which on some brands, weirdly, it does. So that's not a problem on the ZF. Another very nice to have that's on at least a Canon R3. I don't know if it's on the original R6. It might be on the R6 too. I don't think it's on the Sony a7 IV, but it puts a box around the person's face and you can go left and right very easily. If I wasn't holding a second camera and doing the behind the scenes, uh, I'd be able to use a joystick and it's very, very nice. Now for build quality, this camera feels incredible. If you held the previous ZFC, you might have been a little bit disappointed with the feeling of that camera. This camera, the ZF, does not disappoint and it feels very nice. The brass dials are very satisfying and feel like a very well-made film camera. The autofocus, as you've been seeing, is also really well done. It takes a lot of what they developed for the Nikon Z8 and Z9 and they've put it into this. So you'll actually see a really solid improvement if you're comparing it to something like the Nikon Z6 II. That said, the ZF is not a stack sensor like the Z8 and Z9. So you won't see identical autofocus performance, but in my testing, I am very, very, very happy. If you are someone that is considering the Nikon ZF for your wedding photography needs, uh, I am very happy to recommend this camera. I would be happy to use two of these as camera bodies for a wedding day. The only thing that you don't get in comparison to the Z8 is uh, the silent shutter mode. It'll be fine, but it won't be as good as the Z8 and the Z9. So that might be a reason to use one of those as your main camera if you want to go completely silent and use that for most of the day. However, I find the shutter noise of the, the mechanical shutter on the ZF uh, to be, I don't know, polite and respectful. It doesn't sound aggressive. It's not a huge shutter slap like some of the DSLRs and it feels fine in a wedding day environment, uh, even if things are a little bit quieter. Now, one thing I didn't really get to test a whole lot in this video, and it will be coming, so next Friday and Saturday, I have two weddings, I'm going to be photographing them both with the ZF, either as a main camera or a pretty much primary camera. And I will be doing a behind the scenes video over on the Learn Wedding Photography channel. So get on over there and you'll be able to see more of a full wedding day now that I'm comfortable with this camera and I know that it performs to my needs and my expectations. But so far in my just general testing, I am very happy with the low light performance and I'm seeing no more issues when it comes to extreme low light environments and autofocus issues with uh, Nikon cameras. Like if you use the original Z6 after dark, it became a little bit of a challenge to use. Uh, this, I'm not experiencing any of that. So subscribe over there. New full wedding day video coming very soon to that channel on the Nikon ZF. And also, if you want a free gift, you get my wedding day shot list, a preset pack, my email templates, and another gift in the link down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again later with more Nikon ZF content.